The halls are still around. They hide them. Hey y'all! Happy Monday to you, you, and especially you. <laughs> they only left now, really. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker. And this handsome man is my husband. His name is Minister Al Tucker. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing? What's your little name? Me. <laughs> Mr. Ali Tucker. <laughs> And we bring you greetings on behalf of our amazing church family pursuit for his presence ministries under the leadership of our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We love them. We love our church family and we love each of you. So thanks for jumping on this morning. Hopefully you have had a glorious weekend. If it was like ours, it went by too fast. It was super, super busy. But hey. That is the joy of living is we have a lot, lot to do, a lot on our plate. So we are going to try really hard not to hold you long because unlike last week, we had to work. Then mm -hmm. miss that. Mm -hmm. How you do? <sighs> that was wonderful. Okay. Um, let me just remind you of some things. Wednesday is Bible study, as uh, Minister Tawasa Easy says, er, Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time is Bible study right here. On Saturday mornings at 10 a.m., we have a prayer conference call. We can get you the deets for that if you're interested, and it's on our Facebook page. On Sunday at 9 a.m., we are having discipleship class. Right now, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and Minister Kimberly Martin is blessing our socks off. It is so good. Discipleship is open to everyone, and it's also online for our e-family if you want to um, log in at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on Sundays. And then immediately following that at 10 a.m. is our worship service in person at 806 Meadow Lark Lane, Goodlettsville, Tennessee. We would love to have you join us. We just have an um, a amazing time in the Lord. So those are all the things we have going on this week. Again, Bible Study Wednesday. Uh, I believe Minister Tomasa is leading Bible Study Wednesday, so we definitely don't want to miss that. Saturday is prayer call. Sunday is discipleship at 9 and then service at 10. So did I forget anything, y'all? I don't think so. Um, okay. You have anything? No, I can't think of it right now. Mm. What are we talking about? Nothing. <laughs> oh, good morning. Those of you who know the words of prayer, stretch your hand. <laughs> good morning. Good morning again. Uh, we talking about all is well. All is well. What's the scripture reference for that? Um, we're going to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 26. Wait, let me get the background. This is one of my favorite Bible stories. Let me tell you, the Bible, if you were really just getting to it and read some of the stories, whew, they'll bless you real good. This is about the Shunammite woman who is got a little, she's got a little change, her and her husband, and, and they, they have recognized that Elisha is a prophet in the area, and he comes into the area quite frequently. So the Shunammite woman says, let me just make a little room for him so he can stay with us, you know? We make the original uh, Airbnb, VRBO, and let him stay with us. So she prepares this room in her home that he can come and just unwind as he's traveling through, right? And so he comes in and he has a servant, the Hazai, and he, and he says, this is so nice that she did this for us. Gehazi, does she need anything? And and uh, Gehazi says, well, you know, they're pretty well off, so she don't really need any money or anything, but they don't have a child. He was like, that's it. So he calls the woman in and he says, this time, next year, you're going to have a son and, and, you know, promises her a son. And sure enough. She, well, she initially says, now I'm good. You don't need to do all that. But he promises her a son. So she has the son. The son grows. And he is outside one day with his father. And he starts having a headache. And so he runs 
the father sends him to his mom. This this is the Shonda translation. Bless the Lord. Read it for yourself. Second Kings fourth chapter. So um, the child runs to the mom and he says, "My head, my head," and he climbs into her lap and dies. So she puts the boy on the prophet's bed in the little room that she has prepared for him. And she tells her servant, let's mount up, let's go. We got to go find, find a prophet. And her husband's like, is everything good? She's like, everything's good. We'll, we'll be back. Um, and so she rides out to meet the prophet. And so this is the verse, the passage of scripture that Hubby is reading, 2 Kings 4, 26. Okay, 2 Kings 4, 26 is in the reads. Please run now to um, please run now to meet her and say to her, "Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child?" And she answered, "It is well." You want to read another translation? I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them said something. It doesn't matter. Good. You can say that. The message. I like the message. All right, uh, message. The holy man. Spotted her while she was still a long way off, said to, to his, said to his servant, servant Jehazi, Look out there, why is the Shulamite woman? Hold on, look out there, why is the Shulamite woman? Quickly now, ask her, Is something wrong? Are you all right? Your husband, your child? She said, Everything's fine. Was she lying? No. She was speaking. And so what we're talking about today is the, what she says um, in one of the more popular translations, all is well. Even though her son, she, he died in her arms, even though she hadn't even shared with her husband what's going on, even in the midst of all of that, she goes back to the man of God who made her the promise. And further on down in the scripture, I was, uh, hubby and I were talking about one of the things she says is, I didn't ask you for this. I didn't ask you for this son. Uh, because uh, Elisha gives, her, gives uh, Gehazi his staff and says, go put it on the boy. She's like, uh-uh, you, you coming with us. <laughs> she, she basically says, I didn't ask you for this. And she knows that she has some benefits. She knows that because this is a mighty man of God and he serves a great God, that she has some, some, something right here because I didn't ask you for any of this. And so now I'm asking you to fix what it is that you gave me that I didn't even ask you for in the first place. That's somebody's word. When you sometimes come up on a situation, you have to know that you know that you know what belongs to you. If you came home from work at the end of the day and somebody was sitting in your house, eating your popcorn, watching your TV, chilling out, somebody you would never seen before, you, you're going to go sit down beside them and ask them how they're doing? You are going to make it your business to find out why they're there, what they're doing, and if the answers don't come quickly, you're getting them up out of there. You would not make your peace with someone who is an intruder in your home. And that's how you have to see it when the enemy comes after your stuff, that he is an intruder, that he has no legal right to come in to do anything. You have to take your authority. The enemy's going to try. He's going he's gonna to keep bringing stuff to you. Because that's what he does. He's an accuser of the brethren. So he's always looking for an opportunity to trip us up and to throw us off. But you've got to know what this word of God promises, what it declares about your situation, what your authority gives you the right to do. If I went downtown right now and there was a police officer standing in the middle of the intersection with a badge on, that man physically cannot stop my car. Can he? One little man cannot physically stop my car, but because he's got a uniform and he's got a badge on it that probably says city, city of Nashville or Metro government or whatever the badge says, it gives him the authority to just put his hand up and stop me. Doesn't matter what the lights over his head are doing. When he is in the intersection, he has the authority and every single driver has to yield to his authority. Doesn't matter what the lights are doing. They may, the light may say it's green and I can go. But him standing there with his hand up telling me to stop and telling someone else to come, he has the authority. God has given us authority. 
to decree a thing and it is established. But if we don't take our authority, guess what? Guess who takes it? Mm -hmm. The enemy, because he has none of his own. So he's got to come after your authority, your power, your joy, because he doesn't have any of that. So he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He's trying to get your stuff. Oh, God. All right. So that's just um, background. So. Yes, I don't know. Amen. Well, I like the part of the enemy come take your stuff. Actually, they you give it to them. I mean, you think, well, we don't, if we. If we Stressing out more stuff and then, um, just going off about any of the little things. He, 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 he don't get the, he's not even, we don't even put up a fight against the enemy. He know, he, we just give it to him because he, because he really can't take it. If, if you over here, um, if you're here praying and everything, you take authority against him, he can't take your authority. So most times, you know, we, 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 we said the enemy take our stuff, but we give it to him because we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not fighting for it. We're not, we're not putting up a fight for our stuff. So that's something we do. We got to put a fight for ourselves. And what I like with this thing is, is how this woman she can, she might want to. She said all the way up. She didn't tell her husband anything, but she had, she had, she had faith, and she knew that if she got to the man of God, that he could, that she could, that he could, that she could, that he could bring her son back. Cause like her, cause her, her son was a gift from God. Cause like the first, she didn't have no kids, so her son was a gift from God. But like she, like she didn't tell her husband. And she didn't go back. She didn't tell none of the neighbors. She didn't come tell none of her girlfriends what's going on. She, she said, well, this is just something between me and the Lord. So she went to the man of God who had it. And during those times, you know, they couldn't go straight to God. So he had to go through the man of God. So she went to the man of God, told him what the situation was. And said, I need you to have this. Mm. Okay. I'll take a drink. Thank you. <laughs> um, so the first point is speak life. The word says the power of death and life is in our tongue. I, one of the things about this that I've had to mature into is when she says all is well, she is not lying. She is declaring the outcome that she wants to see. She is not speaking the problem. She is speaking life. All is well. I, I don't know how it's going to be well. I don't. That's not my job. My job is to declare that all is well. The word says that that our God is Alpha and Omega. That He knows the end from the beginning. What He is looking for is what do you know? What do you know about what His word says for you? So sometimes when I'm rehearsing the problem, I need to stop and speak life. Now, they said this at the doctor's office, and they said this at the, at the bank, and they said this at work. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that they said, tell me what his word says about your situation. We have got to know. We're real good at the facts. We're real good at what they said on the news last night and what they were saying on the TV during the election and, and what, what they said at the, at the barbershop and at the beauty shop. What does God's word say about your situation? Speak that. Because the power is in my tongue. So when I decree a thing, when I speak his word out of my mouth, the word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When I speak the word of God out of my mouth, my ears hear it and it feeds my faith if i am rehearsing the problem my faith is not it's getting weaker it's shrinking it's it's it's, it's folding up it's just like a kid if you keep saying to a child you're so stupid you're so dumb oh my god i don't know why you can't figure that out why are you doing that you're ugly you're whatever when you look at the history of some of these like serial killers and things that happen to them it was like, it was set up against them since day one because no one spoke life over them. They endured some of the most horrific things. And so they became a product of their environment. Now that doesn't have to be everyone's lot, but you got more to fight through if all you heard was doom and gloom and negativity. If that's all what's feeding you, then sometimes that's all you know. But if you speak life, if you speak well, if you speak the promises of God, which are yea and amen, you have the ability to change your situation because you have power, because you have authority, and because you are feeding your faith by what your ears are hearing. The word of God says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Faith is the currency of heaven. 
can you believe God for what his word says? Okay. Let me in. When you're speaking life, how do you from scripture to back up with what you're talking about? And then when you're speaking life too, don't go around with Job Lord and Sarah Sue and let them talk it out of you. I mean, when you start speaking life about things, don't let nobody tell you there's going to be something different because you speaking, you go on God's, God's word. Now, that's one thing too. You get, get you some God friends. I'm telling you, because words are with two or three, what, what, two or three staying together? Do you think to come to pass? So, you got to get you some good God friend who's going to stand with you. Don't, don't, you can't go to the gallon corner or the, some, of the, some of your co worker because if they don't know the word of God, they, 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 they'll change your mind. So, no, don't do that. You, you, you speak in life to a situation because the way the situation looks, it may look doom and gloom. But you know, God can do all things. God, the word of God says God can do all things. So, you start, when you start speaking life to a situation, find some scriptures to back up what you're talking about. Find some, you know, God, even just like one just told you, God can do all things. Ain't nothing that he can't do. So yeah, stay on that. So look, God can, it ain't no situation you can't handle. So yeah, just stay on what you, stay on what you believe. Stay on what, 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 God, what the Word of God says. And like I said, find some friends who, who help stand with you. And like I said, don't let, don't get around your friends who who, who everything doom and gloom because they, they they ain't good for your faith no way. <laughs> the real leader. <laughs> Uh, there's a, um, an influencer on Instagram that I follow uh, really closely. And it's funny because I started following her just because she 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 may be about five, maybe about 10 years older than me, five or 10 years older than me. But her style is beast mode. I just love how she dresses, how she carries herself. Um, she's a woman of God. And recently she was diagnosed with cancer. And she has lost a brother and a sister to cancer. And so she's been very public with um, going through her treatment and just, um, just, just declaring her healing. And just She's been very public. She didn't shrink back. She stayed out in the public. And so last night, I was, whenever, she, whenever I see her face on my timeline, I always like go watch to see what she, she was talking about. And, <laughs> and she, it's not funny, but... Her personality is such that she didn't have a whole lot of uh, play play in her. She's just real kind of what you see is what you get straight for. And so she was saying that ever since she has come out with telling people that she is um, believing God for her healing against cancer, that people keep sending her stories of people that have died. And she's like, what, like, are y'all throw? Like, what, I am trying to live. I am believing God to live. She was like, what are you thinking that you would send me something about someone that you knew who had what I had and they died? She was, and she was like, if you're going to send me something, she said, I'm only receiving positivity because I am living. I want to live. Send me some stories about that. And I, I was going to inbox her but then I just I just prayed for her because I thought just the fact that she has to come on and say that you know sometimes people don't know what to say and you just wish they wouldn't say anything but but you yeah, yeah. what hubby was saying was so powerful you have got to surround yourself with people who are speaking life the word of god says that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses do you mm -hmm. think the cloud of witnesses is like mm, I hope they make it. I don't know. Don't look good. That race kind of tight. No. These cheerleaders, these giants in, in faith are cheering us on. They are saying, you can do it. Hang in there. Run your race. You got this. We're with you. We're for you. Um, um, one, of, one of the ministers um, at church, uh, she sent us a message last night. She said, I need you to agree with me that my husband and I have a peaceful night's sleep, that they had had sleepless nights for the last two nights, and she got to go to work today. And she was saying, y'all just believe God with me that, that we sleep peacefully. And she gave us the scriptures to stand on, and we all prayed. And God gave me a vision of just a flurry of angelic activity at her home because he was saying like if each of us were praying and 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 declaring that they would have sweet sleep that it was like we were dispatching angels to go and war with the enemy or anything that was causing them not to sleep well and she said a testimony this morning first thing in the morning we slept well 
That's mm -hmm. such a small thing, but it shows you the power of uniting believers of like-minded faith. If you don't know any, we will stand with you. That's why we come on here so that we can be iron sharpening iron. When we get ready to start our work week, do you think the enemy wants us to have a great week? Do you really? Do you, do you think the enemy wants us to have a great week? Do you think he wants our finances blessed? Do you think he wants our children well? Do you think he wants our body healthy? Do you think he wants our marriage successful? Do you think he wants us on here giving praise and glory and honor to him? Probably not. He probably has a dispatched an assignment against all of that. So we have to push past every distraction, every hindrance to come here to say, you're going to be all right. All is well. Let me tell you what the Lord says about your situation. Because we know the power of encouragement and speaking life over you. This ain't nothing that we just do on Mondays. This is our lifestyle. We have to speak life over each other, over our situation, over our girls, over our finances, over everything that concerns us because we are iron sharpening iron to the kingdom of God. So this is serious. We laugh and joke on here all the time because that's who we are. But we're serious about you having the best and most abundant life that you can because that's what Christ came to give to you. And if you don't know that, we have an assignment to interrupt the pattern of your thinking that, oh, well, it is what it is. It's, they say I ain't going to make it. They say they ain't going to give me the loan. They say I ain't going to never find a job. They say my kid's just crazy. They say my marriage over. What does God say? That's what they say. What does God say about your situation? Okay? Speak life. The second thing is pray the word, not the problem. Amen. Have you ever been around a whining child? Mm. Sometimes you can hear them in the grocery store. I ain't going to say they at your house. Sometimes you can hear them in the grocery store and they be like, I want this, I want this, hey, get this, get this. And they may fall out of the floor and have a tantrum. Every time I hear it, I tell her, somebody get ready to get a spanking. Or they need to, but, you know, sometimes it's spanking, sometimes not so much. But when I hear that, I'm like, get that. Like, correct that. Yank that up. Don't let that continue because a whining child becomes a whining adult. Why is this happening? I don't know what's wrong. That's how we pray to God sometimes. Okay, if you're a babe in Christ and you don't know any way to pray, great. But let me be the first to tell you, the word of God to, tells us to put God in remembrance of his word. Now, God, you said that I am the healed of the Lord. Now, God, you said the joy of, my, of the Lord is my strength. Now, God, you said that I come behind and no good thing. God, you said that I'm the head and not the tail, that I'm above only and not beneath. God, you said that I'm blessed going out and blessed coming in. God, you said that I would lie down in peace and my sleep would be sweet. God, you said no good thing which you would hold from those who... I got to put in remembrance, put him in remembrance of what he says. Do you notice I'm not looking at the scriptures? Those are in me because I have to live them and breathe them. So when you call me and say all hell is breaking loose, I may not have time to be like, hold on, hold on, girl, hold on, hold on, girl, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -uh. I got to have something that I can pull on and no judgment, no guilt, no shame, no condemnation. I've had to get to this point to know what his word says so mm -hmm. that I can pull on it readily because the enemy is coming for your stuff. And so we have got to stay in a posture that I said, uh uh, uh you can't come over here. Um, the other day, maybe a week or so ago, we had rented a car. And um, I think Hubby had rented it. And I was like, we were trying to take the rental car back and his, get his truck. And I was like, well, you have to drive the rental car, don't you? He was like, no. They said, because you my wife, you can drive it. Listen, that's a benefit. If he did, if I was just, you know, a girl on the side, chick on the side, whatever, um, he would have to pay extra for me to be a designated driver. But because we are in covenant, because even the state 
even the government recognizes the fellowship of this union and the covenant, then there are certain things that come with that. If he hadn't said that to me, I'd have been like, oh, okay. Well, did you pay the extra money so I could drive it? Because we don't want no trouble. So that if something happens and I'm behind the wheel, are we covered? We are in covenant with the Most High God. And I've got to know that when something happens, I'm covered. That there are some things that come with it because now I'm a child of the Most High God. When you accepted God as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is Lord, and you confess that thing with your mouth, and you will win. They said, welcome to the kingdom of God. That thing came with some benefits. And just like benefits at your job, they're yours. But if you don't ever go to the dentist and use your benefits, guess what? They steal your benefits. Your utilization is zero, but they steal your benefits. If you never go get your little physicals and your checkups and your flu shot, if you get a flu shot or not, it's still yours. Still still a benefit for you. That, that's up to you. Um, we get all kinds of benefits at work. Uh, we get a uh, grub hub. Where they put money on our account and we could just order lunch. Now, if I don't have to use the money, I don't get it. It's just out there sitting. So, these promises that you have, you going to activate those or they just out there sitting? Because mm -hmm. you don't know what benefits you have. Put the Lord in remembrance of what his word says about your situation. I'm coming for my benefits. You said that I could be healthy, healed, and whole. As Jesus Christ is, so am I in this world. I want that. I had a cough. I had it for about a week. I had to take some medicine and put God in remembrance of his word. Because I asked him, do I take some medicine or do I just stand? But because I wanted to see baby Mallory, I was like, let me take some medicine and stand because I wanted to, to to do what the Lord was telling me to do to address the cough. Cough is gone, but I still needed to follow the prescription. Okay. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, you started out with, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I was one of them, one of them kids that um, when I was young, I, I went to go start doing something, but <clears throat> at that time, my mom, she didn't. She, nice she, she, she didn't wait here. Yeah, she didn't wait to get me home. No, because my mom never believed that at all. You, you, Whenever you show up, I'm going to show up. <laughs> and then she did. But, but, but you know, I, I thank her for that. Because I, I see the kids in the store now. I know they won't get, they won't get, they won't get, get away with that, my mama. But the thing is, she's afraid of the word, not the problem. And once you pray the word of God, once you speak, once you pray God, when you pray God, the promise back to God, his word back to him, God honors that. It said once you pray and once you pray back to him, after you, after you after you start praying, don't take the problem back home. Don't don't pray to God then but as soon as you get up off your knee, it, you fear the weight of the problem again, because then you ain't you ain't you ain't accomplished nothing about that. When you when you give to God, leave it with him. Don't, yeah. don't 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 take it back home. Because one thing you take it back home, you you give it gonna pray again. And God's gonna tell you don't and um you don't worry, don't stress, don't fret, don't do none of that. Because once you pray and give to God, you get into your high, you get into the authority of God. And he, like, he can have all things. So once you give it to him, leave it with him. And no fear. No fear. 365 times in the Bible, the word tells us, do not fear. That's one for every day. Don't fear anything. Trust God with everything. There is, it's so easy. Sometimes people don't associate it as fear. I'm, I don't think I'm scared. I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of wondering how that's going to work out. If you are rehearsing the problem, that's worry. That's fear. That's doubt. That's unbelief. Meditate on the word of God. You're using the same muscle, the same muscle that you use to rehearse the problem. I wonder how that's going to work out. I wonder if everything is going to be okay. Oh my God, well, what's going to happen here? Well, what? I don't, I'm, oh God, should we do something different? I don't know. I prayed about it, but I don't, mm -mm. The same muscle that you're using to rehearse the problem 
is the muscle that you use to meditate the word of God. God, you said that no good thing would you withhold from me. God, you said that I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the field. God, you said that you would give me supernatural favor with you and with man. God, you said you would step before me open doors that no man can close. When I think about the goodness of God, I remember that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Thank you, God, that you are my joy. Thank you, Father God, that you are my strength. Thank you, God, that you have the ability to declare Claire, peace be still. If I start rehearsing all the things that God says, I don't have time. I I, I don't I can't worry and <laughs> and worship at the same time. I've got to pick one over <laughs> the other. And so when I start thinking about the goodness of God and start praising him and start worshiping him, just meditating on his goodness and on his faithfulness, it feeds my fear. It feeds it feeds my faith and starves my fear. It kills the fear because then I began begin become confident in the fact that he who began a good work in me will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. So the first thing is to speak life. Stop the doom and gloom and the negativity. Pray the word, not the problem. Mm -hmm. Put God in remembrance of his word. And then the third thing is to keep your faith full. How do you do that? I'm so glad you asked. Has God done anything for you? Yeah. Think about those things that he's done. Think about those ways that he, sometimes for me, God makes a way. And I don't even, I, I would think I would never forget. But sometimes I don't even remember the details of how I got out. I just know that I'm out. I'm just like, God, how did you even work that out? I was so stressed about that. I was so overwhelmed about that. But God, you you showed out. And wow, how, God, how? And when I begin to think about all the things that he has done in just my 54-year-old life, I'm like, God, you are awesome. And if you delivered me then, you can deliver me now. The word of God says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I feed my faith by remembering that God is faithful. That he's blessed me. That he's kept me. That 99% of the things that I worry about never happen. That I have got to feed my faith according to your faith, be it unto you. And if you don't have enough faith, then your faith-filled friends can help pray you through, help bring you through, help support you through. Sometimes your faith wavers, especially when it's situations that are new. That you've never encountered God. Maybe you know God as 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 a bill payer, but you don't know Him as as a healer. So when when sickness comes, you're like, well, what, well, well, what? So maybe I've got to get in touch with some people that say God healed them and and say, now wait now. How, how did you do that? Oh, okay, you anointed yourself and you forgave everybody of everything and you loosed the fence from your soul and you stayed on your love walk and you prayed over your medicine before you took it and you just thanked God for your healing and you just praised him that all was well concerning you. Oh, okay, that's how you do that. Now, I may have to call that friend back from time to time and be like, okay, now they said this. Now, what? Do, okay, we still going to praise God. We still going to, okay, all right. Um, maybe it's the finances. Maybe the finances, the money is funny. The change is strange, but we call someone who is um, a believer in the area of finances and they tell you, look, when you have a need, you sow a seed. Okay, so put, put a seed in the ground and, and do scriptural giving. Name that seed and declare what it is that you're believing God for. And oh, Okay, and rejoice on that and thank God that it's already done, that the bill is already paid and, and that and stay close to God for any guidance or wisdom that he will give you about that situation. God has strategically placed people around you that at your lowest moment, at the moment that your faith is about to give out, that they that you have access to people who can pray you through, mm -hmm. who can speak life over you. This faith living is good living. It works. And God is faithful. We are living testimonies that God is faithful, that he's faithful in the area of finances, that he's faithful in the area of healing, that he's faithful about your children, that he's faithful about your future, that he's faithful about your career, that he's faithful about your relationships. There's nothing that our God can't do. Anything. The word of God says, with God, all things are possible. You have got to feed your faith. Okay? Amen. Let's go, go ahead and receive your blessing. Receive your healing. Receive your 
Pray that to help whatever you may need, because God is willing to give it to you. I want to leave you with something too. I was I I, 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 I read this yesterday. It's in say it's in first it's in Second Corinthians um, chapter one verse ten. The Amplified Classic Version said, "For for it is He who rescued and saved us from such a perilous death, and He will still rescue and save us. In and on Him, in and on Him, we have set our hope." Our joyful and confident, our joyful and confident expectation that He will again deliver us from the danger and destruction and draw us to Himself. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, what you're going through, God, I mean, God will pull you through. He, he, I mean, our hope is in God. He, he will, he, he will save us. I mean, He, 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 He saved us up. To, he saved us at this point. I mean, because of Him, we, none of us won't be in no way. And He will, He, he will continue to do it. He got. God is faithful. The what, what, what she said earlier, God is faithful. God is faithful in our joy. And who is it? We get strength from our, we get joy from our strength in the Lord. So don't you don't 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 be trying to do everything yourself. Give to God. Give, give to God somebody who who, can, who we know can handle the problem. Because ain't nothing too ain't, ain't nothing too big for God to handle. Amen. All right. All is well. That she prays the court. All the way. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. All is well. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. <clears throat> Just to praise your holy name, Father God. Father God, right now, we open our hearts and minds up to let you in, Father God. Father God, any problem we might have, we just give you it in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Your word of God shall cast all your cares into you, Father God. So any care we might have, Father God, we just give you it in the name of Jesus. Father God, even if not our care, Father God, the people we know, we cast their cares over to you right in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. So, Father God, let us... What worthy to call you upon our lives, Father God. Father God, let, we, let us bring your scripture back to remembrance, Father God, where we can speak life to each and every one, Father God. Speak life to our situation, Father God. Use the word of God. Use your word, Father God. We, we bring your promises back to you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are in our lives, Father God. <clears throat> Just thank you for always being ahead of our lives, Father God. Thank you for saving us when we're worthy to be saved, Father God. Thank you for loving us. We even know how to love us, see us, Father God. Father God, thank you for always being there, Father. Thank you for being that faithful Father, Father God, that we can always come to any hour of the day, Father God. If we any situation we might have, we just can bring to you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. So thank you for your son Jesus who died on Calvary Cross. But we just can come straight to you, Father God. We ain't got to go through no problems, Father God. We ain't got to kill no animals, Father God. We can just come straight to you, Father God, with our problems and cares, Father God. And just leave at your feet, Father God. So right in the name of Jesus, Father God, just continue. Purify our hearts, purify our minds, Father God. Yes, Father God, let us have more righteousness, Father God. More, Father God, just make us to the men and women of God that you need us to be, Father God. We can walk worthy to call you upon our lives, Father God. Father God, and just thank you for all you're doing in our lives, Father God. Thank you for your word, Father God. Thank you for just getting us up this morning, Father God, in our right mind, Father God. We can read your word, Father God. We can pray our prayers to you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. For your word said, all is well, Father God. So we just thank you for making everything well. So, Father, even now, I hear you saying that you have sent my husband and I on assignment as... You sent the friends with the four with the four friends with the paralyzed man to tear the roof off to get him before Jesus for his healing. So God, our assignment today is to tear the roof off of any distraction, any hindrance, any negativity, any doctor's report, any report from the bank, any report from the school, any report from the job, God, any report of negativity. God, we came to tear the roof off to get your people into your presence to receive the their healing, to receive their breakthrough, to receive everything that God has for them so that their testimony will be that all is well. God, I thank you for the opportunity to stand in the gap. We do not take it lightly, God, and we unite our faith with their faith, God, because your word declares that a threefold cord is not easily broken. So I thank you, God, for creating in them a fortified city, a renewed mind, an open heart to receive everything that you have 
have for us. God, your word declares that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us with healing. Thank you for blessing us with finances. Thank you for blessing us with peace. Thank you for blessing our children and our children's children. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us in ways that we cannot imagine, God. And the more you bless us, God, the more humble we will be, the more we will serve you, the more we will give the blessings back to you, God, because we want the giver more than we want the gift. God, we trust you in every area of our life, God. We thank you, Father God, for teaching us, God, how to be loving and lovable. God, we forgive everyone of everything. We loose offense from our soul, God, and we are determined, God, to stand in the gap for those who need to know that you are still in the miracle working business, that you are still a healer, that you're still a deliverer, that you are still the lover of our soul and that you will not withhold from us any good Thing. God, go ahead of us into this day and into this week. Make every crooked path straight. Give us supernatural favor with you and with man. Set before us open doors that no man can close. Father, we thank you, God, for being a God who can throw your weight around and show the enemies who's boss. God, we praise you in advance for what you're going to do in us, for us, and through us. Not because we're so good, God, but only because you are so good. Now, Father, you know what your people stand in the need. Uh, meet every one of their needs according to your riches and glory. Bless them to be a blessing always. And we give you praise in advance that our testimony is all is well. Yes, in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, God bless you as you go throughout your day and throughout your week. Know that we're praying with you. We're praying for you. We're believing God for some great things in every area of your life. If you're looking for an opportunity to sow, Pursuit for His Presence Ministries is good ground to sow into. Not because we desire a gift, but we desire fruit that may abound on your account. We give honor again to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kenja Blanton and baby Valerie and Mother Blanton who is in town. We love you so much. <laughs> We give honor to our overseer, Dr. Caesar Richburg and Mother Ella and the entire Richburg family. We give honor to our co-laborers in Christ. We give honor to our church family and we give honor to each of you. We believe that you're not watching this by accident or by coincidence. So if this blessed you, put amen in the comments. Share with someone that you know needs to be blessed. Continue to feed your faith and starve your doubts, knowing that your testimony and the praise report for your life is that all is well. Amen. Anything else? That's it. All right. We love y'all. Be blessed. Bye.